you to uncork the American musical's classic blend of music, laughter, dancing, sentiment, and showmanship with a freshness and confidence rarely seen during the Cats decade. Is that something you read? Are, were you at Sardi's and somebody is reading that aloud to you? Anyway. Some of the highlights of her amazing career as a choreographer include Liza stepping out at Radio City Music Hall, Steel Pier, Contact. I know. If you love dance, go to YouTube right now and, and my God, find excerpts of this wonderful show. Um, the revival of Showboat with Hal Prince and this both director and choreographer of the revival of The Music Man with my friend Craig Bierko, who she chose. Who knew he could be an amazing uh, music man he was? Of course, one of the best musicals ever, ever on Broadway. The producers. He's a five-time Tony Award winner, four for best choreography, one is best director of a musical for the producers, and she is here from Broadway. <laughs> to talk to us about the wonderful Vincent Minnelli musical and of course her work. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Strong. <laughs> She would always talk about the bandwagon because she used to follow him around uh, during the filming of the bandwagon. She was very small, of course, but she remembers it. And, and he actually would make some of the costumes for her as a little girl. So he would bring home uh, some of St. Teresa's costumes. Oh, for her. really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, what is it about? I mean, Vincent Minnelli did so many great musicals. And we were talking on the phone about the difference between a movie like Singing in the Rain. In the bandwagon, but what's so great about the bandwagon is, as you were saying, it has real elements of a real Broadway show. Well, yes. If if the, the when I got the call for the bandwagon, I said yes, yes, because a lot of things that happen in the bandwagon really do happen to Broadway folk, to theater folk, and of course the the two lead characters that that are played by Minette Fabre and Oscar. Uh, Lamont are, are really uh, Betty and Adolph Green, and yes. it's based on them. And yes, I mean, they, they're incredible. And so they, they rode the bandwagon, but they were able to take a nod to themselves with these two characters of, of what it takes to put on uh, a musical. And of course, uh, the, the uh, uh, Jose Farrar is, is what um, Jack, um, yes, is, is, is what's the, uh, Buchanan. Buchanan, thank you, Jack Buchanan. He's uh, based on Jose Farrar, who had about three Broadway shows running, and uh, and he was producing and he was starring, so they, they you know tap into that. So, and then the idea of a movie star coming to Broadway to star in a Broadway show, which is of course Fred Astaire's part. So everything about this movie I, I can relate to, and, and even that idea of a show being in trouble out of town. Uh, as it is in the bandwagon, and what are you going to do about it? And you had an experience when you were doing Crazy for You, so this is, they're trying to mount the show out of town. Yes, yeah, we, were, we were opening in Washington, D.C., and right at the, when you're doing a show in New York, you rehearse in New York, and then you t and then you take it out of town, and sort of the last day in the rehearsal studio, everybody goes forward, the set designer and the stage manager, and everybody goes forward to that city <laughs> to prepare for the tech for you. And, uh, but we run it in the studio for some of the producers and 
uh, investors. And at the end of that day, we realized the second act was no good and, and we had to do something about it. And it wasn't until we saw it up on its feet with sort of a, an audience of about 25 people. So we got on the Amtrak train and we, between New York and Washington DC, we rewrote the second act of Crazy Field. And it was so intense and I remember feel, thinking it was so brave of everyone and everyone was there trying to work it out. The writer, Ken Ludwig and Mike Ockrent and myself and, uh, and our costume designer, how we were gonna save, we didn't wanna tell the producers we we're gonna throw out you know, $300,000 worth of costume. <laughs> So it was wild, and then when we showed up in D.C., we said to the stage manager, there's a whole new second act. <laughs> and, uh, but thank God we did that, because then Crazy Few uh, ran for five and a half years at the Schubert Theater in New York. But had we not been done that, we wrote the whole second act on the Amtrak train. I don't think uh, that would have happened. You said there are those elements. There are some scenes where you know the cast sitting around a piano, singing songs in between the show, and you said, yes, that's really Yes, I, we were, we, even when uh, producers out of town, we were in Chicago, and we had that very first preview, and I, I didn't know what we had, you know, I, I just know, you know, you sort of immerse yourself into uh, a big bucket of talent filled with actors and musicians and musical directors and all writers, and you don't really come up for air until that first preview. And to hear the audience on that first preview of the producers in Chicago, it was amazing. And I was in the back and I, I couldn't believe it because I everybody said it wouldn't work. Why would you do it? Why would you take that movie and, and make a musical out of it? It's never gonna work. So then when I heard the audience, I, I just couldn't believe it. It was so exciting. But then uh, I thought, well, where is everybody? And, and they were all in one, one uh, hotel room of one of the gypsies, like in the bandwagon, and everybody was in there and they were all singing songs and there was a piano in there and everybody, the entire company, was inside this one hotel room. And uh, so, you know, it's very much like the bandwagon. You all, all go in together and, yeah. and uh, you know, you, you wish, if you do musical theater, you just wish you had underscoring your whole life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was someone playing your, the piano, no matter what you did. I want to talk a little bit about the choreography, which is Michael Kidd, and what, you know, what is his place in musical theater, and the Girl Hunt Ballet? But first Michael Kidd, and then Girl Hunt Ballet. Well, he's, Michael Kidd, I mean, he's amazing. I mean, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers is spectacular. And it's so athletic, and so uh, it's, I mean, he, he really choreographs for men beautifully. I mean, it's so strong, very strong. But he is a storyteller, too, and everything he does is, is every movement has a motivation that is about the plot and about the storytelling. And he was loved and admired, and I got to meet him once, actually during Crazy Few, and, and that was, uh, was quite, uh, Wonderful to be able to hug my kid, but because I admired him so much, and his work in in the movie here is spectacular. You know, Dancing in the Dark. Oh my! And I, what I love about Dancing in the Dark too is they they first walk through Central Park, and there are people dancing, and these two incredible dancers, Sid and Fred, don't dance. They just sort of walk through these dancers, and they come to a clearing where they're all by themselves. And then you see them think the dance, you see them think the movement, and all of a sudden, Sid starts to dance, and then Fred immediately starts to dance, and then, and then they're dancing together. But I love the way that starts, because all, all the beginning of the movie, they wonder if they could dance together, and then you see them think it and make it happen, and that was my little kid. But what's the, you know, the complexity, of course, Sid is the classic thing, she's taller than Fred Astaire. And what is that, how does that, does that pose an issue in this film or does it make them more of a couple? Well, I think when, when, she, when she was hired, Fred was worried about how tall she was and he would talk about it so much 
that um, uh, Minnelli put a bit into the movie where he's on a staircase and he keeps trying to step up to see how tall he would be next to her. And that didn't have that was sort of a spontaneous thing, it's just because he talked about it in rehearsal so much. But of course, you'll see she dances in flat shoes all the time. Yeah. But I think it, in, in reality, uh, when you partner someone, you do want them, the woman not to be taller than you are. Yeah, well, it's interesting to sort of contrast and compare. I know it's not fair, but Singing in the Rain, Sid Reese, and Kelly versus the Girl Hunt Ballet. Just for me personally, don't get mad at me, I prefer this because I think it's a better story. And I prefer the I prefer the dance. I just think it's a little bit more exciting. Well, the whole girl hunt ballet is like a take off on the Nicky Spillane, the detective, and yeah. And and actually, Fred is playing a detective. He's not in his top hat and tails, so it's great to see him uh, performing another character. And then she plays this mystery woman. And I, I think this is the first movie too where Sid has been given a part to uh, actually speak and yeah. I have a character all the way through and she did a beautiful job. And do you think, I obviously have no idea, but when they're dancing, do you think they're dancing to play back? How would their, because I have to say again, you know, that girl, the, the dynamic of the, when she is like going towards him with the hips and- I know. You know, are they dancing? Do you think they're dancing to play back there? I think it's, it's a combination, because I think when you choreograph for, in, in, for the film, when, when you, a lot of times you will do things to, with just piano and drums, and then the orchestrator goes back in, and you know, when Fred would leap in the air, then the whole orchestra leaps in the air, or, or when Sid kicks her leg, the whole orchestra goes bam. So a lot of times, they wait to put that in until after it's done. But they would be doing playback of, of a, probably a small band. Mm -hmm. And then they would add the big orchestra when they see the whole thing. So let's talk a little bit about Fred Astaire. You talked about the word that you use, I wrote it down, is that he danced with musicality. And nobody has captured that like Fred Astaire. What, what was it about? What, what, you know, what is it about Fred Astaire that just is so sublime? Well, he, for one thing, he, he sits in the pocket of the rhythm of the music. It's just like right in the beat of the music. Uh, he's so musical. And uh, he was very collaborative with his choreographers and also uh, with his orchestrators and his arrangers. And, uh, very much if he does a, a tap tacit, you know, that was talked about, and he wants the band to drop out just so you hear his feet tapping. And it, so it was a very collaborative uh, situation with the music department with Fred all the time. Mm -hmm. But he is, there's something about him. He has uh, such a grace and an elegance, um, and he sort of looks like he's floating in the air, but it's all, all within the music, and uh, you don't see that with, with uh, other performers. Do you have a favorite, I mean, everybody is his favorite partner of Fred Stare. I love Sid Reese. I know some people love Ginger Rogers, but do you have a favorite with him? Well, I like them all. I love Rita Hayworth, and uh, I, I think Ginger, I think Swing Time is probably my favorite movie of all. And, uh, and just that idea of, of like pick yourself up and dust yourself off and oh. start all over again where he pretends he doesn't dance. And she's a dance teacher and of course he <laughs> sweeps her off her feet. But just I, I, I think that the, those two dancing together in that is extraordinary. And uh, the band way is, I mean essentially it's a comedy. It's, you know, it's got a lot of laughs in it. And you obviously have a lot of experience uh, choreographing, directing uh, the producers with Mel Brooks. And just tell me, like, how did that, how did, how did that come about with Mel Brooks? Well, I think, I think Mel had seen uh, Crazy Few and he had seen, uh, I did a, a Christmas Carol at Madison Square Gardens which ran for like 10 years and mm -hmm. Mel had seen that. And, and you know, Mel is wonderful, he's so collaborative and I think he just wanted to be with people who understand musical theater. And I think for years, uh, people have been telling him to try and make a musical out of the producers. Mm -hmm. And 
and uh, he just wasn't ready. And, and finally, he was ready, and he was ready to write, write it all, write the music, write the lyrics, do the whole thing. Because of when, all of Mel's movies, you know, he he does write songs in all those movies that you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now he was it was meant to be that he would write a full musical. And when you're coming up with that, uh, have, have, has, has everyone seen the producers? Oh, yeah. Yeah.